Mary Harris Jones was born in 1830 in Cork, Ireland. She was part of a family of Irish immigrants. She was an unlikely character. However, Mary Harris Jones helped to create a revolution in the world of United States labor. According to Mary Harris Jones' autobiography, she stated, My people were poor. For generations they fought for Ireland's freedom. Many of my folks died in that struggle. My father, Richard Harris, came to America in 1835. As soon as he became an American citizen, he sent for his family. Needless to say, Mother Jones was a worker's advocate. Mother Jones was known for saying, pray for the dead and fight like hell for the living. A college professor once called Mary a great humanitarian. She quickly interrupted the professor and said, get it right, I'm not a humanitarian, I'm a hell raiser. Mother Jones. The following example of Mary Harris's Jones writing demonstrates her love and dedication for the labor movement. Mary writes, Dear Mr. Conroy, I arrived here on Wednesday night and was nearly worn out. I witnessed a big parade which was a protest against the courts. The gathering which followed was four miles long as they marched to the Capitol. I attended the meeting and addressed fully 12,000 people. It was a great day in the history of the labor movement in Colorado. I am very lonesome after my room and all of you, particularly after Little Joe. I hope the strike will go on successfully in the Irwin field, and I know that I shall be anxious about its success. Tell John for me that I want him to quit reading novels and to study a very important question, that is, the economic questions that confront the day. I wish that you would do up all my things and send them to 802 Buckingham Place, Chicago, Illinois. I hope some day to come back and see you all. I will always remember what a kind, nice home I had with you. I miss my room very much, and I do not know when I will get another like it. Tell Mr. Conroy to take good care of his health, and don't you overwork yourself. I am, believe me, always yours, a grander civilization, Mother Jones. Mother Jones was a remarkable, brave, courageous character unlike any woman in the 1900s. During the 1900s, the societal norm for women was that of a homemaker caring for their families. Women had little to no prospect of ever becoming a public figure or entering into any sort of political life. However, Mary Harris Jones, over the span of her life, transformed from a child of an immigrant worker, daughter of a railway construction worker, to a teacher in Michigan, to the wife of an iron molder union member, once the mother of four children, a dressmaker, and she finally transformed into the mother of all working laborers. Mary Harris Jones was no stranger to hardship and loss. She was familiar with hunger and famine, born in Ireland in the 1830s. She also suffered great personal loss when her husband and all four children died from the yellow fever in 1867. She moved back to Chicago as a widow, and a fire claimed her home, claimed all of her personal property, and claimed her dressmaking shop, the famous fire of 1871 in Chicago. After the fire, Mary received assistance and sought refuge from the Knights of Labor while attending meetings. This experience with the Knights of Labor, combined with her exposure to the working man, woman, and child, helped to launch her into the labor movement. Perhaps this set the foundation for which she would find her inner strength and pure devotion to helping children, workers in mills, brewery workers, railroad workers, mine workers, streetcar workers, 
women workers, and she fought for equal rights for women, and she even helped Mexican revolutionaries. Mary Harris Jones dressed in an old-fashioned clothing style, and as a talented seamstress and dressmaker, she asked minor wives to place bonnets on their heads using their shawls. Her point was to demonstrate a symbol of inferiority. Mother Jones started as a former school teacher and seamstress and remarkably ended up helping to form the Social Democratic Party as well as the International Workers of the World. Mother Jones later in life had strong ties with the United Mine Workers of America, which was an all-male organization. After the deaths of her children and husband and the fire, Mary stopped using her name and began to sign all of her letters as Mother. This nickname took hold, and she was referred to as Mother by Union officials, laborers, and even United States presidents. Her first involvement in a strike was in the 1877 Baltimore and Ohio Railroad strike. Mary Harris Jones was 47. Later in life, when she reached her 60s, Mary was an organizer for the United Mine Workers of America, and she fought for the rights of miners. Much of her work was done in western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Colorado. In 1913, Mother Jones was actually arrested three times in Colorado coal fields. However, this did not stop her. She was a spirited fighter and a hellraiser and continued her mission to help workers. She addressed miners as her children and her boys and would only respond to those who called her mother. She was known to be an organizer, an excellent public speaker, and through her words, raw determination, and dedication, she wielded influence and managed to organize labor. Mother Jones was also very active in the state of Pennsylvania. She was part of the labor riots in Pittsburgh in 1877, anthrite coal strike in Scranton, Pennsylvania. She organized the Children Crusade March that started in Kensington, Pennsylvania, during the Children Crusade March, children working in mills and mines joined her in a march that went all the way from Kensington, Philadelphia to Oyster Bay, New York, which was the hometown of United States President Theodore Roosevelt. They carried signs and banners stating, We want to go to school, not the mines. Mary also participated in the Great Steel Strike of 1919. According to Mother Joan's autobiography, she attended a convention in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, to discuss the anthrite strike. At this convention, there were 150,000 men from the towns of Scranton, Shemokin, Coaldale, Panther Creek, and Valley Battle. When a strike issue was called, Mother Jones stated the following, Boys, this strike is called in order that you and your wives and your little ones may get a piece of heaven before you die. In Coldale, the workers were not allowed to assemble or organize, so Mother Jones took the matter into her own hands, and she went to a local town, Mikado. Again, Mother Jones demonstrated her tenacity as she rallied the minor wives, asked them to leave their men at home, to allow their men to care for the children in the home. She asked the women to put their clothing on, their kitchen clothing, bring mops and brooms and tin pans. They began to march for a 15-mile stretch, banging on their pots and pans. At the 13th mile, they were ordered to stop and halt from a militia that was on patrol near Coldale. As the militia saw a bunch of women with pots and pans, they thought it was a joke, and they allowed the women to pass, but little did they know the power and influence this mob of women would have. They passed the militia and chanted, Join the Union! Join the Union! According to Mother Jones' first-hand testimony in her autobiography, every last man joined the Union in Coldale. During this march, the women told the mine bosses to go home. They told their wives, clean them up and make decent American citizens out of them. No one was hurt. No property was damaged. It was a mob of women with their mops and brooms to which a jail could not hold them all, and no one was arrested. However, 5,000 men were organized that day, as well as streetcar men. When Mother Jones was asked, did the superintendent bosses get after you? These were the mine bosses known for their brutality. Mother Jones replied, no, we got after them. 
Their wives and our women were yelling around like cats. It was a great fight. Mother Jones once again was known for raising hell up in the mountains with a wild bunch of women. Even the town sheriff was scared. He mistakenly told Mother Jones, not knowing who she was, Oh Lord, that Mother Jones is sure a dangerous woman. Here we have a perfect display of a peaceful yet effective organized march brought about by the brave actions of Mother Mary Harris Jones. Mary Harris Jones lived to 100 and died soon after. The world today is mourning The death of Mother Jones Grief and sorrow hopper Over the miners' homes This grand old champion of labor Has gone to a better land But the hard-working miners her guiding hand O'er the hills and over the valleys In every mining town Mother Jones was ready to help them She never let them down In front with the striking miners She always could be found she fought for right and justice. She took.